You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent. I can't wait to get back into this one. I've been having a hell of a lot of fun with it. Um, but yeah, so it looks like we have arrived at the, uh, or at least we've arrived in the city of the Academy. Uh, looking pretty modern, must say. Uh, this does not look very fantasy-like. It looks like a, kind of like a modern city. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy and maintain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's go. Alarm chain, you're up. Okay. Alright, here we go. Speaking of the city, you have always been curious what it looked like up close, but you were still too groggy to enjoy the view, so you covered your eyes and waited it out. Huh. Alright, here we are. Let's go, Cassian. You see Max getting off the front seat. Uh, okay. You grabbed your backpack and stepped out of the vehicle, taking a moment to stretch and look around. Whoa! You see a tall structure ahead of you. Oh, boy. Oh, that's pretty. Huh. Interesting design. Welcome to the Galantir Guild. You'll be staying here for the time being. At least until you can afford your own place, that is. Max gave you a smile as you followed him into the building. Ooh. Very well done scenery. Why is that blue and those aren't? Huh. Whoa. Even more awestruck now that you're inside. The interior reminded you of the medieval inns you've seen in fantasy books, only with a modern twist. Hey, hey, hey. Huh. I was just like you the first time I got here, too. Come, let's get you checked in. Max led you to the receptionist to sign you up. Ah, welcome back, Max. And you are Cassian, yes? Yeah, that's me. Let's see. Everything seems to be in order. Please sign here and here. The receptionist handed you a form from one of the boxes in the back. You grabbed a pen on the counter and signed your name as instructed. Writing with your new hand certainly felt different, if not a tad awkward. You still managed to do it after a moment of fiddling. There we go. All right, you're all set, Cassian. They give you a set of keys. You can see a number etched onto the side. I'm sure it would be a helpful addition to the Galanteers. I like those guys that tried to sign up as Platier. Can you believe that? Uh, that's a strange name for a person. What's wrong with that? Ah, it's the name of our old headquarters. <clears throat> Anyhow, enjoy your stay in the city. Uh, oh, okay, thanks. He gave the receptionist a courtesy nod and headed back. Max was waiting by the large doorway to the right. All done? You nodded. Now, come along. Let me show you around. Max took you to the right wing of the guild, cutting straight through the long corridor with a lot of rooms and stairwells on the sides. As you stepped out of the back entrance, a broad, a broad tower soon came into view. Its shape reminded you more of a lighthouse, except it was much taller, if not as tall as the skyscrapers back in your world. This here is the observatory. People also call it the Research Tower, and as the name implies, it's the center of research and development on both magic and science. He followed Max to the door, through the archway entrance into the base of the tower. Each floor of the tower is actually dedicated to a specific type of magic or science. He stopped to read the sign by the tower entrance. Galantir Observatory. There was an area similar to the reception back at the main building, like a guest lounge of sorts. You could see other guild members resting by the sofas and chatting. Hey, have you heard the news? The situation outside the barrier is looking pretty grim. Uh-huh. Why do you care? We didn't get this break to worry about things we can't deal with. Instead, we better finish that assignment sooner. The director will have our hides. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Huh. Meanwhile, Max seemed to be explaining to you a bit more about the place, but something about the conversation you overheard just bothered you. Oh, hey, Alex! Max called for the links passing by the lounge. Yay, more characters! Or a character! Huh? Max? Well, well, haven't seen you around in a bit. Indeed, have you been? Same as always. What about you? What are you doing here? Ah, I'm showing the new guy around. Max waved at you to come closer. Cassian, this is Alex, one of the top scientists at the tower. Alex, this is Cassian, our new mercenary. Uh, hi, Alex, nice to meet you. Great, another sacrificial lamb for the king, I see. The Lynx gave you a look of contempt, but still shook your hand in return. Well, nice to meet you too, Cassian. Listen, I'd love to keep you two company, but I've got more pressing matters to attend to at the moment. Alex said as he made his way to the elevator beside the spiral stairwell. Ah, oh, sorry guys, I didn't clear my nose. Allergies and such. Huh. Jeez, what a nice guy. He rolled your eyes and Max scoffed. Yeah, that's Alex for you. Oh yeah, Cassian! 
You see, you see Alex poking his head out from the elevator. Um, yes? Since you're new here and probably have nothing better to do, why not make yourself useful and come by my lab at the underground levels? A new test subject is always welcomed. Uh-oh. The last thing you saw before the door closed was a sly grin, which made you a bit uncomfortable. Don't mind him, Cassie. He must be in a weird mood today. What do you mean? He doesn't usually joke around like that, but I guess stressful lab work can do that to you once in a while. I'm sure he doesn't mean what he said, though. Max gave you a shoulder pat as you left the tower and headed back to the main building. <laughs> you may have seen it earlier, but through here is the central hall. It's where the classrooms and training rooms are. As you can see, they are closed during weekends and holidays. You're free to join the program anytime you want during weekdays. Hmm, so where will I be staying, actually? Oh, the living quarters. Or you can call it the dormitory. It's at the back of the guild building. Just go through the hallway in the back, and it should lead you straight to the dorm rooms. Look at your keys again in case you forgot what your no room number was. Got it. Hey, Max! Looking good, man! A red dragon approached Max from the training quarters. Oh, hello, hottie. Oh, whoa, what's this? Huh? Oh! Hey, Rye. You stepped aside as they greeted each other with a brief side hug. Didn't expect to see you around here at this hour. Where are you going? I think I should do a deeper voice for him. Nah, you know, just fetching some things for Alex. <laughs> oh, who is this cute little guy? He tried to glance away a bit when the dragon laid his eyes on you. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Cassian. Nice to meet you. Uh, well, it's a pleasure getting to know you too, Cassian. Ray winked at you as he placed an arm around your shoulder. Let's enjoy a cup of coffee sometime, shall we? Um, I, uh... The way he looked at you made you even more flustered. Hey now, leave him be, would you? <laughs> you know how it is for me, Max. I'm always into the new faces. I know, I know, but keep it to yourself, Rye. You'll just scare off the newbies. Besides, didn't you say you have some errands to run? Ah, you're right. We'll see you around, Cassian. You can feel yourself blushing hard from his flirty tone and winking. <laughs> he stayed frozen in place for a moment even after Ray had left the central hallway. Come on, Cassian, don't fall behind now. Max already took the first corner to the left. Ah, uh, uh, okay, coming! And here we have the guild's food court. After catching up to him, he led you to a large doorway amid the corridor. You looked at the wooden sign hung beside the door. The, 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 the honeysuckle? Ah, yep, that's the official name. Anyways, the place is open from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m., so you can have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. That sounds really neat. You looked around as you followed Max inside. The place immediately reminded you of the school canteen, but instead resembled a traditional tavern more, which you found quite cozy. Good day, boys. Oh. oh. Okay. Good day, boys. The bear behind the counter waved at Max. Everybody at this place seems to know him. Ah, Cody, how are you holding up? Ah, another bear. At least it's not a bear that's called Bear. <laughs> Bjorn. <laughs> Swell. And where, and where have you been, Max? Actually missed seeing you here every morning. Just been in some time away from the city. I see. Well, now that you're back, what can I get you? The usuals? Nah, thanks. I already had lunch on the way here. Besides, I'm mostly here to show our new guy around. The Max nudged you a bit towards the counter. Um, hi, I'm Cassian. Well, hello there, Cassian. I'm Cody, head chef of this humble kitchen. My job is to make sure everyone in Galantir stays well fed. After all, no army can fight on an empty stomach. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. Cody said with a bright smile, lifting his ladle for emphasis. So, if you wanted something to eat, just give the word and I'll be sure to whip up a proper meal to fill up that belly of yours. Yes, sir! He chuckled. There was something about his speech that really uplifted your spirits. Hmm, now that you mention it, maybe a light snack wouldn't hurt. You know the drill, Max. Just take a look at the menu. Let me know if something interests you and I'll, let you, I'll set you right up. Will do, Cody. Thanks. Max gave the bear a thumbs up before looking to you. Well, about that wrap. Well, that about wraps up the tour for today. You can stay here and have lunch with me, or explore more on your own if you want. Hmm. I think I'll go to my room first, unpack my stuff, and maybe rest for a bit. It's been a long trip, and um, that last nap was not very pleasant. Oh, gotcha. Well, I'll be around here if you need me. See you later, Cassian. Okay. Bye, Max. Bye, Cody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You left the tavern and found your way through the back hallways, which connected to a different area. The direction plaque at the entrance read, Galantir Residential Quarters. This must be it. You took a moment to study the diagram next to the plaque. The dormitory building had six floors, each split into four main halls with a meeting point in the middle. 
Very different from the college dorm I've been I've seen before. He thought, taking a look at the keys you received as you made your way up the, up the middle stairwell. Based on the number inscription, your room was the third one on the first left wing of the fifth floor. You breathed a sigh of relief as you finally got inside your room. You can see why they had to etch all that info onto the keys. That's quite easy getting lost just wandering around the dorm. Let alone the entire building, the entire guild building. He you put your backpack down and turned on the light. Whoa! You decided to look around your room right away. To the right of the living room was a sofa and a coffee table with a wall-mounted flat-screen TV on the... Wall-mounted flat-screen TV? What the fuck kind of fantasy land is this? We got fucking flat-screen TVs here! What the hell? God, Game of Thrones would have been a hell of a less violent if everyone was just watching TV. <laughs> A marble counter separated the living room with the kitchen, it, which, which was rather large, which was a rather large pantry and a set of a dining, in which was a rather large pantry and a set of dining table and a set of dining table. Okay. Through the doorway in between the kitchen, in the kitchen and the living room was the bedroom. There was a king-sized bed and a wall-hung wardrobe on the side. The bathroom was on the right side of the doorway, which had a small bathtub, sink, shower, and a small closet stocked with cleaning supplies. This is a very fancy for a dorm. You thought to yourself as you sat down at the sofa. This room really looked like it belonged to a hotel instead of a school dorm. Come to think of it, so far the guild felt like someone took different buildings in a city and merged them together. Now that you're complaining, the sight was rather mesmerizing, even if the layout could be confusing with all the labyrinth and hallways. You decided to start unpacking for about half an hour before throwing yourself onto the bed. You changed your shorts and flopped back onto bed. Too exhausted to do anything else, you fell asleep the moment your head hit the pillow. Hmm. Hmm. Sleepy boy, sleepy boy, does whatever a sleepy boy can. Does he fly through the air? No, he doesn't because he's a fucking sleepy boy. Anyway, you woke up after a while. The clock on the nightstand blinked 6.30 p.m. Through the bedroom window, you could, va you could vaguely see the sun setting on the horizon. You hopped out of bed, feeling quite well rested. The dorm's ambience is not quite as peaceful as Alyssa's cabin, but you have a feeling that you could get used to this. After taking a shower, you dressed up in fresh clothes and left the room. There's that music again. <laughs> The central hallway was still mostly empty. Only the building staff were seen roaming the corridors. According to the direction plaque, the corner to your right led to the honeysuckle, while the left was the left was the way to the science tower. You already felt quite hungry, but doing some exploring around the guild also seemed fun. Where should you go first? Uh, I'm gonna go to the fucking honeysuckle. I'm not gonna mess with Link's boy right now. I should go get something to eat. Can't really explore on an empty stomach. You follow the directions along the hallways. The tavern was already booming with laughter and singing when you got there. There are a lot of people here. Oh, it's the weekends, of course. You can already see familiar faces after squeezing through the groups out front. Max! Cody! You called for them as you approached the bar. Ho! Oh, good evening, Cassian. You're just in time for dinner. Yeah, I can't wait. What have you two been doing? Oh, we're just catching up. Max just told me that you're the hero from the prophecy, eh? Hero in training, Cody. Hero in training. Max said amid his chuckling, taking a sip from his mug. Right, and you're still eating, Max? He took a seat next to him. Mm-hmm. Just having some light meal after the main course. Wait, what? <laughs> He's having a light meal after the main course? What the fuck? Well, he is a big boy. Max said he took a bite on what looked like a crispy wonton. That looks good. You can feel your stomach grumbling just at the sight of it. I probably should order something. What's on the menu tonight? Oh, a lot of things. Cody here can cook basically any ingredients that come to mind. Borks, drill, heck, even the fuguta fish. Fugit fugita fish. The f I don't know what any of those things are. I think a borks is a, like just a boar. Fugita fish, I don't know what kind of fish that is. Might be like a damn puffer fish or something. Max said, giving a thumbs up at Cody, to which the bear chuckled. Ah, you speak too highly of me, Max. I still can't beat that lady friend of yours, though. Alyssa? Well, I'm afraid you still have a long way to go, Cody. Her cooking is really something else, almost like she's been using some kind of food magic. The more you eat it, the tastier it becomes. True that, I kind of miss her cooking already. You decided to take a look at the menu sign above the bar. A lot of the dishes seem to be made from local animal creatures called beasts. You still don't quite recognize a lot of their names, let alone knowing what they even look like or taste like. From what you've seen and heard, some beasts are quite similar to certain animals and common livestock of your world, while the rest are either a mix and match or just completely alien. The flora and fauna of this world is still a confusing topic to you, and you still couldn't make up your mind on what to have for dinner. Maybe I should just go for a random one on the list. 
You're about to speak up, but seeing how Max and Cody were still chatting away rather heartily, you decided to wait for now. Instead, the commotion at the nearby tables quite caught your attention, your eyes for a bit. Uh oh. Cassian, Cassian, Cody snapped you out of your trance. Hey now, please don't starve yourself trying to go trying to go through the entire menu. Uh oh, you're right. Well, do you have any recommendations then? All this is making me even hungrier. <laughs> Hang in there, Cassian. If choosing is too hard, you could always go for my usuals. Buffalo steak, buffalo steak, medium rare. Max gave you a shoulder pat, his eyes gleaming at that last. Huh, you and your steak. Well, you can certainly go for that, or you could always try the chef special. Chef special? What's that? You asked, and Cody suddenly leaned across the counter, closer to your face. It's a secret you have to find out on your own, he whispered with a wink. Uh, ah, I, I see. He blushed a bit at the gesture, pretending to read the menu as you hesitated for a moment. So, what will it be? <laughs> hmm, what should I choose? Uh... I'm kind of curious as to what the chef special is. I guess I'll have the chef special. Ha <laughs> ha, excellent choice. You won't regret it. <laughs> well, good luck, Cassian. St hey, don't ruin the surprise. Cody briefly leered at the Malamute. Anyhow, I'll be right back. <laughs> from the counter, you could vaguely see Cody preparing the meal in the kitchen area further in. Even from what little you've glimpsed, you could tell the bear was not messing around when he called himself the head chef. The sizzling in the kitchen clashed with the hectic ambience of the tavern, and soon enough the enticing aroma of a delicious meal permeated the bar. Cody returned with a dish after a few minutes, and your mouth was already watering from anticipation. Here you go! The bear placed the plate before you when you heard more hollering from one of the crowds on the other side. Ah, excuse me. Looks like I have some rats, some other patrons to tend to. I'll be right back. Enjoy your meal. It smells delicious. You licked your lips at the thought. The food turned out to be a vegetable stir-fry mixed with several chunks of... meat? You couldn't tell what it was, but it smelled sweet and sour at the same time and felt squishy when you poked it with your fork. The vegetables consisted of broccoli, carrots, and mushrooms, things you were already quite familiar with. There were also bits and pieces of what looked like some green octopus tentacles? It wriggled a bit when poked, which almost made you gagged. You managed to hold it in, however, since you did not want to be rude. You were always, you're always taught not to waste any meals given to you, after all. Well, done admiring the food. Better eat up before it gets cold, Max said, and you felt a little pressured. You decided to take in a spoonful of the strange dish. The initial taste immediately sent chills down your spine. Uh, you shivered, struggling to chew properly with how gritty it was. It was sweet, salty, and had a faint metallic flavor to it. You could still feel the tentacles wriggling against your tongue as you tried to bite it down. The mysterious meat had a very strange texture. It looked squishy, but it was rather crunchy when chewed on. The combination of textures and flavors was very bizarre, and you couldn't bring yourself to swallow no matter how hard you tried. You could still feel bits of the food wriggling as you managed to wash it down with water. So, what's the verdict, Cassian? He looked at the Malamute, who was smiling. You had a feeling that he knew about this all along. Um... Yeah, it's, it's good. You nodded up and down, trying to keep a straight face while holding yourself from shivering too much. You scooped another spoonful portion to get it over with. After many struggles and quite a few glasses of water, you managed to finish the meal at long last. Well, I'll be. You actually ate up the whole thing. Now that's impressive. Max chuckled hardly, giving you a pat on the back. Th thanks, you said amid your coughing. I don't know why, but something tells me you're enjoying this a lot. You looked, you looked at Max suspiciously, and he only laughed. You sat still for a moment, at least until the gurgling in your stomach had died down. Eventually, you looked around a bit, realizing Cody had been eyeing you this whole time. The bear gave you a knowing smile as he shook his head, so you forced a smile and gave him a shaky thumbs up. You chatted with Max for a while until Cody finally returned. That's funny. That's so damn funny. Welcome back, Max said, lifting his, prop his prop probably empty mug to greet the bear. <laughs> well then, how did you enjoy the meal, Cassian? Yeah, it was great, or d decent at least. He briefly glared at Max as he snickered. I see. I hope you didn't spoil anything too soon, Max. Heh. <laughs> he did make it through the whole thing, so no harm done after all. <laughs> Indeed. I'm glad to see my cooking hasn't failed to deliver. Could he give you another wink, to which you only forced a smile? In fact, consider it on the house. A welcoming gift to our rookie here, yes? You rolled your eyes a bit as they laughed. You kind of wondered how much someone would even be willing to pay for that bizarre meal. And sorry for not keeping you company, boys. Things really got in the, have gotten a bit hectic since one of the waiters left. Cody sat down by the counter to catch his breath. What about your other waiter? He's taking a day off. Said he had important events to attend to. The bear sighed. I could really use an extra hand around here. Cody then looked to you. Heh. Hey, 
Maybe you could help me in between your training, Cassian. What do you say? Hmm, I don't know, Cody. There's still a lot for him to catch on in order to become a proper mercenary. But, it's totally up to you, Cassian. We can still train once in a while, even if you decided to help our chef here. Well, I guess I'll give it some thoughts later. I gotta go now, though. Oh? Where are you going? Actually, what I'm gonna do is... Let us... Load... Maybe... Autosave... Uh... Here. Do this, yes. Okay. Actually, I'm going to pause it right there. In the next episode, we'll go through Max as usual. Kind of curious to, as to how that one will turn out. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. This has been another episode of Heroes Advent. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!